All right, so welcome back to a new one on this channel. And on this one, we need to talk about the uh, segments. As we know, on Bitwig 5, we get a major thing, which is the MSEG, you know, the multi-segment envelope generator. Now, I've released a video talking about the curves, which is a modulator in LFO that uses the same engine. So segments is very similar to that. But the thing is that segments is something that we can use as an envelope or we can use it as a modulator. So if I go to the polymer right here and you can you have it as a grid module, of course, you can select this uh, envelope and use segments as an envelope. And if I click right here, you get a more you know dedicated view. If I play something, it's going to be using this as an envelope. Of course, we get some other options right here. We're going to be talking about this in a minute. I'm going to be going to the first one. And every time I play a note, it's going to be doing whatever instruction that we provide right here, just like, you know, our own ADSR. Right? Now, the other thing that you get, and for now, I'm just going to be going back to the usual ADSR, is going to be a segments as a modulator. So I'm going to be going to segments and select segments as modulator. And notice that we get pretty much the, uh, you know, the same options with some, you know, additional options. So when we go to segments, we have the MSEG editor. And this is like the main soul of the MSEG that we can draw whatever we want. And right from the start, we get pretty much the same ADSR. We can disable it from here. You know, this looping that we have right here. I'm just going to go to the first option again. We're going to be talk. We can talk about this in a minute. If you already know how the MSEG works, I'm not going to teach you anything new. It's the same engine. So right from the start, so you can resize it up or you can resize it to the sides. But the thing is that, as a different from curves, this one, what it does is going to expand because with segments, what you get is you get a timeline. This shape, whatever it is that we are doing right here, could be really, really long. So we get the bars right here at the top. And when you hover on the top, you're going to be getting the timeline. So you can create a super long, long curve or you know segment in this case and have a very you know long modulation in this case i'm just going to be doing something simple i'm going to be going all the way down just like this a double click to reset maybe i'm going to be right clicking right here and you can reset the curve and start from the beginning and when you double click it's going to focus on this area let me just do something normal right here now, you have all the options and you get the most common options that you get with the MSEG. You can select all points and then do delete to start from the beginning and there's nothing. Now, of course, this is a modulator, so I'm going to need to map it to something. And I'm going to be using the cutoff. Now, the whole MSEG works with the snap and the grid that you have at the back. If I do something like this, for example, it's going, it's going to be doing that instruction. Right? And it's not an LFO. It's going to be triggering every time that it receives a new note. So everything depends on the snapping the, that you have right here. You have a grid that goes on the X axis and a grid that goes on the Y axis. And by going up, you're going to be adding more, you know, boxes. And the main point of this is that you can snap to the tiny little corners that you get on the grid. And that's the whole point that you can snap it and just you know make it a little bit easier when you create something new now it's super slow i'm going to be adjusting this to be you know much shorter so we can see it modulating there we go a little bit better so you can create points and you drag them and you snap right there to the grid it all depends on the uh, options that you have right here now, if you don't want to snap, you can click this option and it will just, you know, remove the snapping so you can freely move the points. Now, also, if I go back to snapping, now the instruction, it's uh, unipolar. It goes only but up. So if you click on the plus minus, it's going to be bipolar. It's going to go up and down depending on what you have right here. Now, you don't need to do... Now, you don't need to... So you don't need to click on all the points and do them manually. You have some options right here. You can just click on the pen and then you just can draw whatever it is that you want. All right? That's, again, the whole point. Now you have other tools, like, for example, the other ones. And I'm going to be creating, uh, in this case, a square type of instruction. 
More like, uh, you know, like a sequencer or something like that. Where we can go up and down. You know what? It's too long. So I'm going to be doing something like that. So we get something for the whole duration. All right. Now, the, all the tools are going to be pretty much the same, but, you know, different shape. Maybe if you want something like this, you can just draw it and that's it. Maybe an inverted one. Really cool. So I'm going to be double clicking, just right clicking, and I'm going to go to reset curve so we can start back from the beginning. So what I want to do, we just, you know, want something simple right here. Now, when you move the points, you're going to be snapping to the grid by default. Right? You can disable the snapping, but it disables the whole grid. Now, if you want to move the points freely without snapping, you can hold shift and then you drag it and uh, it's going to disable that snapping. And you, of course, release the shift and it's going to snap by default. So now the cool thing that you have is that when you move this point, if you hold the control, it's going to move all the other points, the following points. And I'm holding the control right now as I drag whatever is I'm, you know, what I'm doing. Right? So if you want to move the following points and skip the snapping to the grid, is control and shift at the same time, and it will let you freely, you know, move it freely. So if you were standing on a point, you know, with a mouse and you hold the control or the alt, it's going to give you this option. It's going to, you know, light it blue. And this is because you can drag up and you can adjust the curves of, you know, the previous and the fall in the following line. And I'm just holding the command or the alt and I'm just dragging up or down. Now, at the same time, what if you want to adjust just this curve, maybe the first one? It's the same idea, but you just need to stand right here and not on the point. And if you hold the Alt or the Command, you just can adjust the curve. Alright. And you can do this on all the other curves, just make it super interesting. Now, what if I want to reset the curves? It's the same idea, by holding the Command and the Alt and double clicking, is going to give you back the linear curve that you had at the beginning. Now, another cool thing, let me just do something like this. It's just going to create a more obvious example. All right, so that's cool. Now, if you hold the control, notice that the icon changes. And it doesn't matter if you have a pencil or whatever. It's just going to change. This means that you can adjust that con up or down. This also works when you have something like this, right? It's just going to adjust it. It just, you know, makes it easier to edit. So using the command and the control or out command or alt or uh, control, just going to make things easier. And these are things or controls that you need to com commit to memory. So, okay, so we have more options. If I right click, you get the same options that we have right here at the bottom, but you can copy the curve and maybe paste it on a different uh, MSEG or MSEC. And you can, you know, reset it just like we did before. Also, you have the transform. This gives you different options, maybe doubling the content. Maybe I have something right here, but, you know, I want it faster. So I'm going to be doubling the content and, you know, I just get into the trick. Uh, if I go to mirror, it's the same thing. And if I go to flip, it's going to flip it. So again, a lot of options right here. And uh, if you come from the shaper box or maybe the infiltrator world, all these options are just pretty obvious. In this case, I want something simple. I'm going to go back to reset and double click on the timeline so I can fit it to the view. All right, so drawing curves, pretty cool, pretty simple and usable. But what if you do something and you want to save it? Well, you can. This icons that you have at the top, one is going to be open or loading and the other one is going to be saving. So let's say I this uh, I like this curve and I you know really like it because it's super cool. Well, then click here and it's going to save the curve so you can reuse it later. All right. Now, the other thing that you get is going to be the loading curve. Maybe you want to load a different curve and you can do it. You can audition it as you go. Maybe I want this one. And while you're playing, you can just, you know, check it out. You have a lot of curves. Pretty much all the curves that you have available on Bidwick. And as you create more curves and you save them, you save them, 
uh, you know, you can use them, you can use them later. Okay, so I'm gonna be making this one tiny little bar so we can uh, talk about the other options that you have right here. If I play it again, you know, the segments is gonna do whatever it is that we want to. But then the other options are relevant. If I go to this one, this is gonna be the intensity or the amount. So as I go down, the modulation is still the same, but notice that the intensity of the modulation goes down until you get nothing. And all of these controls are just things that we get on most modulators, not just here. Now the next is going to be the modes, and these ones are really really cool. By default, right now we are standing on the on the one shot. So as soon as we play a note, it's gonna fire, it's gonna do the instruction or the curve, and then it's gonna die. But if I go to the next one, uh, the next one is going to be a little bit different. This one is going to be the hold. So uh, the hold is going to be holding it until we release it. So if you think about this, this is like a release option. I'm going to, you know, turn it off and I'm going to be playing one key. I'm going to be playing it and does it get stuck right here? It's not going here. It's because it's working as, a, as an envelope. That's the main idea. And when I release it in three, two, one, then and only then is going down. Maybe I can do something a little bit more challenging, let's say. So I'm gonna be playing it. It's gonna get stuck right here. And I release it in three, two, one. It goes to the release stage. Now you can drag this blue line to whatever you want to. And maybe this point is gonna be your release or maybe this one is gonna be your release and so on and so on and so on, right? That's, that's the plan. And then you have the other one, which is going to be the loop. And if you think about this, this is the one we get by default. And this, what it does, is going to loop from this point to this point. I'm holding the key. I play and it gets stuck right here. Now you can make this bigger if you wanted to. And whatever points that you have right here are the ones that are going to be looped if I'm holding a key. All right, so again, super simple. And the other one is just the same idea than the uh, than the looping, but it's going to be called ping pong. And what it does is going back and forward, same looping motion. The other thing that you get right here again are just options that you usually get with all the LFOs or modulators. You can select the speed or the rate. If I go up, in this case, it's going to be slower. And if I go down, it's going to be faster, super fast. All right. So you have all the options like minutes, seconds, and you know, notes, divisions. Again, all of this, I guess, is just pretty obvious. And then you have the smoothing control. This is what it does. I'm gonna go all the way up, and I want you to look at the white dot. So the smoothing control is going to smooth the changes, you know, the modulation. So it's super smooth. In this case, it's way too smooth. So if it's too harsh, you need to go to this control and you can smooth the modulation a little bit. If I go all the way down, it's going to be pretty harsh. But still, you know, if you don't want the smoothness, you can disable the smooth from here. It's just going to, you know, disable everything. Now, the other thing is going to be the poly or the not poly. So in this case, it's going to be the poly by default. So if I play a key, I want you to see the white dot right here. Right? So it's one motion. If I play one key, two keys, three keys, four keys, five, all the dots are following their own version or, you know, yeah, their own modulation. Now, if I disable the pulley, it doesn't matter how many keys I play at different points in time, it's going to be always the same modulation. And as by default, it restarts from the beginning. So they all start on the same place and they follow the same instruction. And this is, a, a, you know, LFO or Synthesis 101. Um, most modern synthesizers, they get this option to make the LFO or the instruction, the modulation, poly or mono. Now, in terms of this option, if I click the modulator, you have an option that says single trigger. And then I play. Notice that the waveform is not restarting. I play a key, let me just do it again. One key, two keys, three keys, four keys, and the curve, it's not restarting, right? Just like it did before. 
and this case is working like a more uh, you know traditional mono LFO, which uh, it doesn't care. I'm playing keys, it will not restart the, the waveform, it just keeps moving forward. Right, so all of this again, just uh, synthesis 101, and that's it pretty much. This is what you get with the segments, and right here at the top, you can uh, load the different waveforms without uh, going to, you know, here. You can just load them, load them from this tiny little folder. Right. So remember, you get this as a modulator, you get it as an envelope right here, and you get it, uh, you know, on the grid as well. So that's it. So hopefully you liked all this and you learned something new. So remember to like and subscribe and see you on the next one.